In the words of my people, Brop. Welcome to the Upshift MX Podcast, and now, your host, Zach Perry. What's up, everybody? This is episode six of the Upshift MX Podcast. We are here in the makeshift studio. Um, my producer, Mark Miller, not only does he bust his ass to make this podcast sound as good as he can, and he's doing it all for free, um, he's now let me use his brand new apartment as our makeshift studio, so a big shout out to him. Um want to thank all of the listeners for bearing with us next, or last week. Um, pretty crazy event happened, for those of you that aren't aware. Um, me, my guest, Kennedy Wilson, um, and our producer as well. We're all students at UNC Charlotte. And uh, there, there was a shooting on campus last weekend. Both of them, thankfully, were not on campus. I was, um, but was obviously safe. Um, so a pretty crazy event. And uh, we're actually going to include some links underneath the video um, for some some charity stuff to go into the families of the victims. Um, they've got a couple of shirts that are like Charlotte Strong to bring together the whole community. But yeah, just uh, support those people. That was a, a horrible event that shouldn't have happened. It shouldn't happen anywhere, um, but it's, it's pretty crazy to think that it happened right here in our own backyard. Um, and so, yeah, but with that, I'm sorry to introduce you like that, but guest Kennedy Wilson, he was on episode one for those of you that haven't heard it. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Man. Yep. And so, uh, going to kind of wrap up the Supercross season, talk about, you know, what we thought of the whole season as a, in general, and then, of course, what we think about outdoors coming up. Yeah. Um, so, overall, what were your impressions of the Supercross this season? Satisfied? Wow. I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, what better way to sum it yeah. up? Um, um, this is the best, best one I've watched. You think that so? That I remember. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So, as far as... You know, the 250 West, 250 East, and 450. Who would you say, as far as getting the title, was the biggest surprise for you? Yeah, I mean... Uh, like, at the end of the season, if, if you, you just knew what had come up, and you watched the end, and you just see who's gotten the title, who would be the biggest shock? Oh, you? Dylan Fernandez. Got to be, yeah, right? I mean, for sure. Um, Cooper Webb's obviously a shock just for the beginning of the season. Of course, but, yeah. Um, knowing what was going on during the season and seeing Dylan walk away the title is pretty... Pretty crazy, for sure. Yeah, I think uh, it might have been Ralph Shaheen or somebody, but they pointed out something during the race that with two or three rounds to go, Pro Circuit had double-digit points leads in both the East and the West division and now didn't get a title in either. Yeah. Like, like bad day to be Mitch Payton. And they haven't had a title in a while. In a while, either. yeah. But, I mean, at least you, know, you look back at the results and it's clear it's not like there's a problem with the bike or the riders. Like, they clearly are capable, but it just – I don't know whether it's a curse or what, but it just seems like they can't buy a break. Um, I mean, Austin's – the thing about Austin's is I feel like we knew it was coming all season. Like, like yeah, I yeah, literally – I, I, I would saying, look yeah. on Twitter just to see how many times Austin had yeah. crashed during practice. Um, Those are – there's, like, some riders that you just – expect crashes. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, yeah. that seems to kind of just be his style is he pushes the limits in yeah. practice and then – kind of knows how hard he can ride during the races. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just kind of a, a huge bummer to go out the way he was dominating that season. Yeah. And then to yeah. go out the way he did, um, a huge bummer. But AC, like, can you imagine? Like, could you imagine being – it's it's not funny, but they released a GoPro. And, like, they – they play it when he crashes and he gets back on the bike and then it cuts out right as he's rolling over. And, like, I cannot believe you are not hearing screaming. Like, at the, I, could, yeah, I would yeah. be losing my mind. And it, it's crazy to think that he was able to stay composed and go out. And, and I mean, it, valiant effort to just finish the race. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad he finished for sure because, I mean, he was almost dead last and knew there was no hope. But, uh, that had to be the longest ride back oh to the God, pit. Oh, my God, I can only yeah. imagine. Yeah. And, I mean, it takes a special kind of person to give an interview immediately after that. But yeah, I think sure. that represents kind of what Adam's about. Like, Adam wants people to see the highs and the lows of the sport. Yeah. And as far as that goes, I've heard nothing but praise for him. Like, like it takes a, a, a true 
media person to really be able to in your darkest moment. Yeah. You yeah. know, and I mean, he obviously wasn't smiling for the camera, but he gave a very professional statement and he didn't try to blame anyone. He, he took credit for it. And so, um, and I mean, I feel like it's one of the interviews that he didn't have to do either. Exactly. I, mean, I think even Daniel Blair yeah. was surprised that he, yeah, did. I mean, uh, Kawasaki probably doesn't even want him to do it. I mean, well, it's I mean, a like bummer it's, for it's them. It's so yeah. fresh. Like in that moment, the emotions have still yeah. got to be so high. You really, there's, there's no way to predict what he's going to say, but I mean, I think they have enough trust in Adam over the years to know he's got a level head and that he's not going to yeah. say anything to get him in trouble. But um, yeah, no, it's it was it was a huge bummer. I mean, I'm an AC fan, and so nothing against Dylan Ferrandis, but you know, I was pulling for AC, and uh, just a crazy tournament. Did you see David Villeman? Oh yeah, he was yeah. so <laughs> excited. That was awesome. That yeah. was that was pretty cool. It was cool to see how happy. They well, were about it because you know they weren't really expecting that exactly. Out, like right? I think they they were they came in still fighting, but at the back you know in the back of your mind you understand how these things kind of work normally. Yeah. Um, it was I was watching the interview and Dylan's like talking and I hear these people yelling in the background and I thought like it was another one of those things where like you know people are yelling USA or something while the French person talks. Yeah. But uh, it was actually David Villeman and I think a couple of their other French buddies, and they were singing the French national anthem. Oh my gosh! And he was he was laughing about it, but that was that was pretty cool, and they've uh, they've definitely earned it because I mean he yeah. you know it takes a lot to be able to just. I mean Dylan it. rode good this year. Oh, anyway. absolutely. Like, I, I mean, mean he's nine points behind Cincerillo, so. And I feel like and he, he had like three wins, two two. Or yeah, three and, wins, and like, he really yeah. he never gave up. Like he understood where he was in the season, and yeah. he understood that you know he wasn't the dominating force, mm-hmm. but. If that mistake happened, like it later did, you know, he was there yep. to capitalize. And so, um, yeah, good for him. Good for Chase Sexton, too. I yep. mean, I think uh, even he has said, you know, people are going to say that the title was handled or handed to me. But like we just said, you've got to be there at the end of the series. Yeah. That, that's what it's all I'm, about. I'm glad he at least got one win. Exactly. Before the season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, to prove that he had just it. To... And, and, I mean, it's uh, – Chase doesn't strike me as super like arrogant, like like pumps himself up. Where I feel like Austin kind of has. I'm not gonna say he's like self centered by any means, but he's confident in his yeah, ability. Yeah. Um, and so I think it reminds I think me I was, a lot of Cooper Webb on 250 days. In a lot of ways, yeah. yeah, I can see that he. Uh, I'm not gonna say he's cocky, but you can just tell, like especially this season in the Supercross, when he walked around, like he knew he was one of the top guys, the top guy, you know? Yeah. And so um, it would have been interesting to see him finish that season if he could have gotten all the races and then where that momentum would have carried him later on in the year. But uh, 450s, that was – I mean, we were talking about Cooper. As far as overall beginning of the series, who who you wouldn't have predicted, Cooper is probably the top. Yeah, for sure. Um, And then – I mean, honestly, right out of the gate, the 450 class is kind of crazy. You got Justin Barsha Absolutely. walking away with the first win. Like, then, convincing fashion. Yeah, but then didn't back it up the rest of the season, really. And then Cooper Webb comes in two rounds later, gets a win. Yep. And then, yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, – it's Blake Baggett got a win this year. Exactly. Like, nice. there's been there's been some depth, for yeah. sure. And, I mean, um, I think it was cool to see – this season, I feel like the exchanges as far as winners, you know, like different winners has gone throughout the whole season. Whereas in some, it feels like, you know, one person starts to take control of it and then they yeah. just dominate throughout. But Cooper, I remember hearing, you know, Cooper had, had won in multiple different fashions. He'd, he'd gotten a good start and run away with it. He'd come through the pack. And, you know, obviously the the photo finished with Ken Roxon, like, that showed the determination and Cooper kind of started to take control of this series. Um, Marvin's mistake on the red cross flag. I feel like both points wise and then mentally, I feel like that kind of threw him off. Like, I don't feel like he ever fully recovered from that. Um, And then Eli, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. That, I mean, I don't even know what you say about that. Do you know Mark? Literally. (laughs) Mark, you got any idea? Like it's, it's hard to say. Um, Dino, super bummed about him, but in the beginning of the season, he was yeah up there. Well, yeah. the end. Well, yeah. He I, was mean, strong. You know, I mean, he, the, you know, you know what prior, I mean. prior to the yeah. injury, but, but uh, Zach Osborne, yeah, I think I think he's got some serious momentum. He's yeah. got to be feeling good. Yeah, slow start for sure, but he, he's obviously figured something. But he's out, getting but, his stuff yeah. together, and I mean, I've always felt that he is more of an outdoor guy. Yeah. Um, and so 
that'll be that'll be interesting. We'll we'll get to that. But uh, yeah, I mean, just the depth in this Supercross season has been fun to watch. Um, I think the the drama, you know, like the Web Muskin teammate oh, yeah. drama, yeah. and you know the the Web or even just the the Web Rocks and rivalry that like isn't always talked about, but it's there. Uh, could, well, I could mean, you imagine if Cooper Webb from 250 Days was this Cooper Webb that was fighting for this title? Like, you know, his uh, his personality, and how, like, his podium interviews, like that Cooper Webb. Imagine the drama that would have been involved. But, I mean, I understand yeah. he's he's got to mature because he's in the I like class. that, though. Yeah. And I feel like Cooper has always run that line where he says what's on his mind, yeah. but he's not, like, blatant. You yeah. know, like, you don't really worry that Cooper's going to just say something stupid, but Cooper's going to tell you how yeah. he's feeling. He's not really going to mask it. And so, um, and I like that. And I think you see it in his writing. You can tell when he gets pissed off. You can tell when he doesn't yeah, like yeah. when somebody does something to him. He's an angry writer, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. And, and he... You know, you can tell he's even said when he gets emotional like that, you know, he's kind of riding almost in a blind rage and uh, he had to keep his emotions in check. I mean, he did a really good job of it this year. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he kind of had, you know, people were talking about the altercation with with Moosekin or whatever, but really that could have been way worse had he wanted Mm -hmm. it to be. And so, yeah, I think he's got to be satisfied with how well he's matured. I think the Baker program has had a huge impact. I mean, it always seems to, but especially with Webb, I mean, coming into the season thinking you're the number two guy, you don't really have a chance, and now you're yeah. champion, you know, that's that's a pretty big step. And it's crazy the similarities between uh, who rode that bike before him Yep. and him. Yep. Like, I mean, it's, it's it says something about the program and, like, where he's training. And, and I think the mentality, too. I mean, yeah. like – like Ryan has always Dungey has always been known for being kind of an overthinker. Like he took, he found peace in doing as much as possible. Yeah. And, and what he always said was just knowing, just trusting in Alden Baker and knowing that if Alden says rest, you need to rest and, and having full confidence in that program. I think that takes a, a weight off of the rider's shoulders that people don't talk about a lot. Yeah. Like, I feel like that is a huge level of stress even though I'm sure Ken Roxon's confident in what he's doing. I'm sure Eli Tomac's confident in what they're doing and it clearly works. They're in shape, mm-hmm. but it just, but it hasn't been working. Well, that's just it. The at the, whole at the end way. of the, yeah. the season who always seems to be on top. Yeah. And so, um, I six think six or five or six straight for so KTM, just something like that. Well, and I mean, KTM and yeah. Husky, they've got to be stoked. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. And Husky. But. Yeah. But I mean, to have that, connection with Alden now and I mean even the Troy Lee guys I think Rattray trains them at the Baker's factory yeah and so they kind of do a similar yet different thing um but yeah just the mindset I think that comes with being at the Baker factory has changed Cooper a lot and and in a lot of ways made him grow up yeah um, I and mean, you could see that this absolutely year for sure. yeah I mean the rocks and pistol thing it was a little bit of a flashback, but, but I, that, I feel like I it, like that. Yeah, I like, I like I was it too. a big fan of that. But you know, when he got back, that all didn't probably give him an earful. I don't I feel know. Like. I mean, I, I wonder cause, because because you got to think like Ricky. I'm not gonna say Ricky was cocky by any means, but yeah. Ricky Ricky knew what was up. I mean, there was there's plenty of pictures of Ricky waving number yeah. one around, and I mean, but it seemed like after that, the following wins, it was always handshakes. Like, yeah. do you ever notice that? Cooper well, Webb and, would walk and, yeah, up I to think everyone. you need to be humble, yeah. and, and I think that's a, a huge part of it is. Cooper kind of is showing that humility, you know? And, I mean, the Webb and Webb rocks and thing, they're putting it behind them, and I think they're at a professional standpoint to where, you know, they're racing against each other. They don't have to like each other, but, yeah. you know, they're civil. You did a good job. I did a good job to where they know one's not going to try to go after the other. And so, yeah, I mean, I think the the handshake and, and the amount of respect that they should have for anybody at that level – um, is something that you should see all across the board. I mean, even like like the biggest change for me, like you see, is Barsha, and I mean, like obviously he still has his flare ups here and there, but yeah. like you think about two fifty day Barsha, old good old Bam Bam, and then you get into the four fifty class, it's it's a whole different animal, and I feel like it has to change you. Um, but yeah, looking at the Vegas results, so you got Tomac, Muskin, and Webb. Um, Osborne has been a surprise for me. I mean, like I know that. He is coming up, and I feel like he's even said, I don't know whether it was his podcast or another one, but that he's feeling more and more strong going into the outdoors. 
Um, Bogle, he finished 10th, probably not the best result for him, um, but he was getting stronger at the end of the season. Yeah. Um, Baggett, seventh, he's been surprisingly, like for Supercross, he's been surprisingly good all season long. foreshadowing too for the next series that we're going to talk exactly. about. Exactly, exactly. And so, um, and, and we know how he is out there. Yeah. And so, um, Cole Seeley, who's always buttery smooth. Yeah, God, such he's a right style. there, yeah. Um, Probably had the most heat race wins this year out of anyone, it seemed like. <laughs> absolutely, and he goes so fast without looking fast. At all. Like, it's kind of ironic that he's the same number of Kev- as Kevin Windham because they're just yeah. so smooth. And so, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting season. Um, it's been fun to watch. And, I mean, while I've always felt that Webb's had a good control of it, and, I mean, like, people kind of told in the beginning, they were, like, thinking Webb was – just going along for the ride or whatever, but you know, you've got to feel like Webb's had that confidence the whole time. Like he's had that self belief, and everything else is just reassuring that. Yeah, um, I mean, he's beat these guys before. Exactly, like, and I mean, I feel like it's always been in this Supercross season. It's been the guy in second, like it's Webb versus Muskin, and then there was like that period where I think Roxon was in second, or he was closing. Like it changed points. so many times. Yeah, and then it was like yeah. Tomac, and like even throughout the season, it was you no, know, it's Webb and. Muskin for the title, and then no, it's Webb and Tomac, and so it just the inconsistency behind Webb has been crazy. Mm-hmm. But you know, for some reason, he's been able to put it together week after week, and I mean, he's had some some gifts. I mean, like that one heat race where he crashed, and then the red flag came out yeah. right after. Like that's he's got to be thankful uh, for that. Yeah, yeah. I definitely this championship definitely wasn't gifted to him because, I mean, look at the race wins. Absolutely. He had the most race wins. Like, And like we said, he's done it in numerous different yeah. ways. And yeah. So. And it kind of like, kind of gets at me when people say that he w- the fastest rider didn't win the championship, but clearly he was the fastest rider. He won the most races. Yeah, at the end of the day. He was the fastest over the whole series. Like, And people talk about that, you know, what what is the end goal? What You know, the eye on the prize is – the prize for you race wins or is the prize for you championships? I mean, like for me, when I think of somebody that just wants to win every time they hit the track, I think of like a James Stewart an yeah. Austin Forkner, even, you know, he doesn't want to be second in anything. Yeah. And then you look at somebody like a Dungey who is consistent. He's not panicking. He knows it's a long game. And it seems like at the end of the season, there he is. He's in the hunt. And, and while Webb has been able to, manages this thing from the front, he's done a great job of not getting freaked out, doing as well as he can on his bad nights, finishing well when he has bad starts, and we see it's paid off. Yeah, for sure. Um, He has no regrets, I'm sure. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's got yeah. to feel great. And, I mean, it was cool. I don't know if you've watched the, the press conference from Vegas, but – he somebody was like, oh well, immediately, you know, how are you feeling for outdoors? Do you think you're gonna be one of the guy? And he he basically said he couldn't care less about outdoors. Like all he was focused on was he just won the Supercross title. And I think yeah, yeah. that is something that's really important. These guys need to soak it in as much as possible. I mean, I'm sure by now he's already back on outdoors and he's testing. He's been testing, but for that moment, yeah, let the guy soak it up. Let him enjoy it. And so I think I hope he comes into outdoors motivated. Um, I hope he. I hope this title has pushed him even more into wanting to win outdoors instead of oh, I just went Supercross, like I'm kind of drained. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to outdoors now. Um, but I think that he will. I think he really likes outdoors. I feel like he takes some pride in the outdoors. Like, like you, you've got to be a, a quote unquote. You know, you got to be a manly man to to ride the outdoors. And I think he likes feeling you know physically fit and feeling better than the rest of his competition yeah. and i feel like outdoors is where he likes to I mean, show if you that. look at 250 days he would have so many comeback rides Absolutely. from the back and then that's before he was on a fitness program like alden baker that's what so, i'm saying I mean, like like realistically you think about where he's at now his fitness is at a level we've never seen it and we watched this guy you know walk down jeffrey hurlings and i mean obviously yeah. charlotte wasn't an outdoor outdoors but it was a race. That's where his shirt's from, actually. Absolutely, yeah. It was a great race. And so it was – it's one of those things where we know when Webb believes he can do it, he tends to find a way. And so it really yeah. should be interesting to watch. Um, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to get more into the outdoor preview, what our predictions are for the rest of the season, and uh, who we think is going to have the title at the end of August. So, cool. Just hang with us, guys, and we'll be back with Episode 6. Thanks.
So I guess let's just go ahead and dive into it. Um, we'll probably start with the 450 class. So with Cooper now all of a sudden being like this guy kind of out of nowhere, um, we kind of remember like in 2010 when Ryan Dungey was the rookie, um, which obviously Cooper Webb's not a rookie, but he comes in, he wins the Supercross title, and then all of a sudden he's got this momentum that he carries into outdoors and – you know, he later wins the outdoor title. Do you think Cooper's trying to do that same thing? And do you think he's got what it takes? Yeah, I mean, uh, Cooper's obviously a fast outdoors rider. He has two national titles, right? I think outdoors, so, yeah. Outdoors, yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah, winning this uh, Supercross has got to carry some momentum. But, I mean, I feel like he probably don't have as much time on outdoors as you would think just because he's focused on that Supercross title more than anything. But, uh, yeah, I think uh, you have to think that he'll do good. I mean – so I know that you're a big Tomac guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, do you think that he's got enough to dethrone Tomac? No. Really? I mean, okay. So, yeah, so um, let's just get straight to it. Who do you think is going to be the champ at the end of the season? I think uh, I think Tomac. Um, if not Tomac, I'm going to go ahead and say that Marvin might have a breakout year. Because, I mean, last year he was in it until, like, the last round pretty right. much. And, um, so – I think it might be a breakout year for him, and but I think uh, Tomac's got to be the favorite. I mean, the three P would be pretty hard, but I think it's all on the bike at this point if he can get it figured out fast enough. Because you know how he was in Supercross; it took him a while to get adjusted to it. So, so as far as I mean, like we have obviously we've got the Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, Marvin. Um, you've got Kenny, who you know is trying to figure out what's going on with him. Um, someone that's not really talked about a lot is Jason Anderson. He hasn't had any Supercross. Forgot about it. Yeah, said. right. And I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. people are always like, oh, he's just a Supercross guy. But they forget, like, the performance he put on at MX Nations before he got landed oh, yeah. on. Yeah. Like, he was a serious force, and he's had the time to do the preparation for outdoors. And while, you know, the other guys are riding Supercross, I'm sure he's pounding out motos on the outdoor track. Do you think he's kind of a dark horse? Yeah, I, I could definitely see that. Um, while everyone's riding Supercross all the time, he's down at the Baker's factory just grinding out motocross. So, I mean, I think the, his preparation for this year probably better than last year because he was focused on a title last year. So, um, but, I mean, yeah, Jason Anderson isn't the best outdoors rider, but I think this year could probably be one of his best. I, I don't know if he's a, in the title hunt. Like, I don't, I don't see him being the title hunt after a few rounds. But Who do you think finishes better at the end of the season? Jason Anderson or Zach Osborne? That's a good question. Um, I would have to go with Zach Osborne. I was going to say yeah, Osborne yeah. as well. He's he's been riding better and he's obviously getting comfortable. So, um, and we know what Zach Osborne can do on outdoor track. He's like he's kind of like Tomac. He can find that burst of speed that no one else really can. So, um, I think uh, Osborne's kind of a dark horse too, if you want to say that. Now but, we've got the the rookie of the year, Joey Savachi. He's hurt. And not, I don't think he's a hundred percent in for Hangtown yet. Uh, did he not finish the race in Vegas? Or? I, I don't totally know. I know that somebody has said he was injured, but okay. I'm not. I don't think it's a one hundred percent. I keep seeing like we're gonna try everything we can to line yeah. up for the first round, and but it's kind of still questionable. Um, he was somebody I was looking forward to seeing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Justin Bogle, he's kind of been making a yeah. resurgence at the end of the season. And if you Blake think Baggett, Joey Savacci's really good at Hangtown too. Right. I mean, last year I think he won 250 Hangtown. I think so. so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey's always been been good outdoors. It just it always seems like somebody's just a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean, yeah. um, more consistent because it seems like he always has some something sort of, happens. Yeah, yeah. Mechanical last year, whatever. Yeah, something but, crazy. Yeah. A lot of times it's not even just him, but uh, yeah. So I mean, I think. There's a lot to look for. I mean, like, we just talked about, what, almost the entire top ten right there? I mean, like, if you think about that, <laughs> yeah. guys that – I mean, you're still leaving out, like, names like Cole Seeley. Um, who else we leave out? Justin Barsha. We left yeah, him we didn't out. think – Plessinger, Plessinger, who's supposedly going to be coming Wilson back. Dean Wilson will be coming back. Yeah, at yeah. some point, but, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, yeah, there's there's a lot of opportunity it's for – yeah. Yeah, it, it's a huge field. And, I mean, I hope that we see – different winners yeah i mean like I, I, I think we're starting to get to a point like every year it seems like oh well we've got five winners in the first five rounds like this is unheard of and i i would like to con continue to see that get deeper and deeper to where we're getting first winners throughout the season but uh i think this could be the year for it in motocross for sure I yeah mean, yeah and i mean i i just we like seeing a good championship i yeah. mean like it's nice when it comes down to the wire it's cool to see somebody dominate i mean like you know, Ricky and, you know, James, when they went 24-0, I'm sure that that's amazing. But at the same time, 
you know, the battles are something that makes it truly special. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, we've got the, the schedule pulled up right here. How do you think um, – what is it? It's called the Florida National, but it's WW Ranch. How do you think that's going to be as far as the national goes? Yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be pretty similar to uh, – I think the same person that does good at um, – what is it, Fox Raceway that's on there now? Um, we've got – Or Paula. Paula, yeah. 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 Um, well, Fox Raceway, yeah. I see those Paula. two as kind of in the same category. Cause really? They're, they're not really a traditional motocross track. You know, it's built on flat ground. Yeah, they've got, got like, peakier jumps, yeah, it yeah. seems like, it's yeah. A, I feel like um, whoever does – it's going to be, like, similar races, kind of. But, yeah, it's pretty cool to see something in Florida be on the schedule for sure. The heat's going to be definitely Brutal. a huge factor, yeah. Um, so, obviously, we're losing one of, I guess, what would be our hometown yeah. national, Muddy Creek. Um, hopefully, you know, try to make it to some nationals. I was talking to Dad. I think we're going to try to go to Bud's Creek. Um, cool. But, yeah, if I could go to as many as possible, I think it would be awesome um because just as much as the 450 class is stacked 250 class is just as stacked um i mean without a doubt i think cincerello has a chip on both shoulders to prove oh, i yeah, mean yeah. you know there is uh i have been honestly surprised at the lack of sympathy like like i get that he made a mistake but there's really not a lot of oh i feel bad for him it's like you know you, you gotta gotta hold it together there and i think you know, his post-race interview was, was very professional, but I'm sure he's, you know, fighting some demons trying to get ready for this oh, yeah. to prove that he's still I mean, the guy. It's possibly his last chance to get a um, title. I mean, not a title, but right, a, a 250, 250 title. title. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, and then in the same, you know, in the same stance, Ferrandis now all of a sudden has this momentum, and he's on top of the world, and that dude's fast outdoors. Oh, yeah. He reminds me very much of Christoph Porcel, just very smooth with where he goes. He's always kind of taking different lines. Um, who are the top guys you think you're looking for in the 250 class? Um, I would have to say Adam and Ferrandis, and then I I think uh I think Sexton's gonna have a pretty good out. Um, I was gonna outdoor. say, where do you think his yeah. fitness is at as far as being able to last the whole moto? Yeah, I mean he's been he showed bursts of speeds in the past in the outdoors, so I mean I think he'll be all right. Um, I don't think he's gonna be a title contender to say, but I think he'll be on the podium a few times. Might even get a moto win. Now, what about – everybody seems to be talking about Justin Cooper. I hear a lot of people oh, yeah, saying yeah. outdoors Cooper's really, really fast. Um, do you think he's going to be fighting up there with Cincerello and Ferrandis, or do you think he's going to be kind of farther back in the pack? I mean, he did it last year as a rookie. Pretty so, consistently, yeah, too. Yeah. I mean – He was up there. Yeah. And he so, was in the chase for the first few rounds, I'm pretty sure. Like I think, mix, I think yeah. he might have been. Where, I wish Forkner was going to be out there because, yeah. like, the confidence he was riding with this season. Um, yeah, I think it, I think it would have been close – um, the person that, and I mean, like everybody's kind of talked about it, but Thomas Covington. So for anybody that doesn't know, he was racing the European circuit, the MXGPs. He came back to America. He's got no experience in Supercross. So this season has been a struggle to say the least. Um, it's obvious, you know, he, he got hurt. I think it was like his knee or something he tweaked. Um, and he's kind of just taken the time to get ready for outdoors. Um, but the big question has just been his mental state. Where is... Where is he at mentally? Does he believe that he can run with these guys? What do you think he's going to do come the start of this season? Do you think he's going to be up there? I mean, we've seen him, you know, up at the front of these MXGPs, some best of the world. Yeah. Um, but getting beaten like he was, like struggling really, really bad, that's something he's probably not used to. I mean, he's been a fast guy through all of amateurs. Um, where do you think his mindset is lining up at Hangtown? I think it's going to take him a little, a few races to get that confidence back. You know, um, he's going to have to run a few races and prove to himself that he can run up there with the top guys. I think before you see any good finishes. I mean, getting beat that bad in Supercross has got to have a toll, take a toll on you. Absolutely. I mean, it's a totally different thing, but still. And uh, I mean, also even if you don't even take count the Supercross thing, the MXGP class. 450 wise is probably just as good if not better absolutely than the american series yeah. but i feel like the 250 isn't really as good as the american because you got to think they have to move out of the class by the time they're like 22 so i mean you don't have any veteran riders like adam cincerillo would all i think already be out of the class over there like okay so jorge prado he lines up in hangtown where you oh, think he finishes he would definitely do good but you i mean think? he's 
he's kind of on another level over the guys right. right now. So I mean, but I mean, you've got like like Paul's Jonas. I mean, like there's yeah. I don't know a ton of guys over there in the 250 class, but I mean, I definitely think there's some competition. But I see what you're saying yeah. as far as the depth, because um, I mean, you've got guys like R.J. Hampshire that have proven themselves outdoors. They're pretty fast. Um, Cameron McAdoo, he's you got to give the guy credit. He's on he's on a Going up, I mean, what he got box in Vegas, Vegas yeah. Um, so he's obviously gonna have a lot of momentum coming into the outdoors. Um, Michael Moisman, he's been doing really well. Yeah. Um, we're forgetting about a huge name. Let's hear it. Shane McElrath. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, just now, I didn't even it. think about that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I so think I think he's, he's kind of been he's, under the radar. But I mean, he's he got to win a race, race this year. I would say. Yeah. I mean, at least yeah, I would say he's got least, to. Yeah. Um. Martin Davalos, is he? No, I – well, I is think he, he is. Yeah, 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 I think yeah, so. He is. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like, all of these teams, people are like, oh, well, only so many guys can run that top speed. There's a lot of guys that can run that oh, top yeah. speed. Yeah. I mean, Mitchell Oldenburg, he's fast. And, I mean, um, when I got to go to California, however long ago it's been now, um, Justin Cooper and Oldenburg were doing laps out at Fox Raceway. And – I kid you not, I don't think there was more than a bike length between them ever the whole time yeah. they were riding. I mean, they were side by side. And so it's all just about mentally and absolutely. When they Christian get, Craig, I didn't even think about him. He yeah. should be riding. I mean, if you think about it, this is how deep the 250 field is. Chase Sexton wasn't even Geico's number one guy this year. Exactly. It's Christian Craig. Like, yeah. And Chase Sexton's got a Supercross title. So, I mean, that's how these 250 teams are. They have two or three guys that are potential race winners. Yeah, I think uh, I think the first few rounds are just survival. It always seems like somebody yeah, kind of gets especially harder. the two fifty class. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, and I mean, I would have been interested to see because I feel like like Forkner, he's always had this confidence, but I feel like he's he's not scared of Cincerello. But Cincerello, I feel like like whether it's because they've ridden together a bunch or whatever, like AC, like you could tell was in control, like in those triple crowns yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, I would be interested to see what Forkner would have looked like outdoors as far as how wild he seems to be in practice and stuff like yeah. that. Like he's clearly blazing fast, but uh, I wonder if it would have would have bit him any. And I mean, some another whole team that we haven't even mentioned is the Joe Gibbs guys, the local guys. Yeah. Um, I mean, but Amart. They're taking one guy racing this year, though. Did you see that? I did not. Yeah. Um, they're taking one guy in 450 and one guy in 250. Wow. At least for the first few rounds until they can find funding. But right now, yeah, it's just Alex Martin. And then Justin Hill on the two on the four fifty. Yeah, so. yeah. I think uh, I mean A Mark's proven himself that I mean, he can a, run up he's front. A, he's an overall winner, actually. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, and so he's uh, he's definitely somebody to be looking for. Um, but yeah, I think so. Who are your predictions just for hang time, just for round one? Um, in two fifty class, I'm gonna say Adam. Okay. Gets a win, just a rebound, you know, okay. from what happened. And uh, 450 class, I'm going to say Blake Baggett. That's who I was going to say for the 450. Yep. Yep. I'm going to go Baggett in 450. Who, who we didn't even mention earlier. Yeah, no. I mean, like, yeah. he's one of those guys that, you know, El Chupacabra, he sneaks mm -hmm. up on you. But uh, especially at Hangtown, he's, yeah. he's pretty And I feel like he's probably times. been riding outdoors a little bit longer than the rest of probably, them. Probably, yeah. Because he hasn't been the title chase. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, 250, I'm going to go with, with Justin Cooper. Yeah, that's um, a good pick. And so, but I think there's just as much of an opportunity for me to be wrong. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, no, it's it's like we were saying. I think it's it's hard to guess. Um, I'm gonna start playing fantasy moto. You're gonna have to teach oh, yeah. me. I'm excited <laughs> for that. Um, but yeah, I think we're gonna see see battles in the points throughout the top 15 to 20 um, for the whole whole season. And so, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, guys, we'll be back on next week. We're going to have another guest on. Um, this has just been kind of a little preview into the outdoors. We're looking forward to the racing. I'm not going to say that outdoors is my favorite over Supercross, but there's definitely an element about it that's – It's my uh, favorite to go to, for sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, it's yeah. It, the atmosphere, I feel like, is is more true moto. But, um, yeah, no, I, I'm excited for it. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.